friends let us continue with the 18th lecture in module 1. So, far we have discussed about framed structures which has got bending elements both orthogonal and non orthogonal members in a given planar system. In this two lectures we will talk about how to solve the planar truss system using stiffness method. You know truss members have orientations which are non orthogonal therefore, there is no speciality about orthogonal and non orthogonal analysis as far as truss members are concerned. Usually we all agree that truss members do have diagonal members in a truss system therefore, non orthogonal members are very common in truss system. So, we will talk about planar truss system which also contain non orthogonal members in a general analysis. In a truss system joints are assumed to be pinned. It means no moment transfer can occur. Okay. Therefore, they can only resist axial force and axial deformations. So, therefore, at every node or let us say a joint in a truss system, there are only two possible independent displacements of joint translation with reference to the reference axis. Similarly, in local access system each joint can have only two joint translations. So, no rotations at the ends. Okay. Having said this, let us try to draw the transformation between the global to the local axis. Say this is the truss member inclined to an arbitrary value theta. There is a style of marking this theta because this theta should be always measured with reference to the global axis. It means what is the inclination of the local axis x m with reference to the global axis x. So, the angle of inclination theta is with reference to the capital X to small x okay, that is theta. Okay. Let us say we have a member which is inclined arbitrarily which has two joints or two nodes. Let us name these as j and k as usual and let this angle be measured from the global x to the local x as theta. 
So, this is my x m axis, this is going to be my y m axis which is local coordinate system and we all know that there will be independent translations happening along x and along y. We know we will name this as p r of the i th member and the displacement delta r. Similarly, at this joint p s of the i th member and displacement this s. Similarly, in the axial direction it is p t of the i th member and displacement delta t and this is p h of i th member and delta h. This convention is similar to what we have discussed in the beam elements also except that I have removed the end rotations theta p and theta q that is all I have kept r s t h as usual. Let us compare this with another axis system, but in this case I am going to mark the degrees of freedom related to the global axis. So, this is going to be my along y which is p r bar delta r bar. We know that bar represents the global responses. Similarly, in this case it is going to be p r s delta bar s. Similarly, along x this is going to be p bar t delta bar t and along x in the kth node will be p bar h delta bar h. Okay. So, this represents my reference axis system x and y and this represents my local axis system x m and y m and theta is measured from the lo global towards local in the anti clockwise direction. We also say that c x is cos theta and c y represents sin theta. So, now what I want is to convert the local responses with respect to the reference axis responses which I call as transformation. So, I can write the transformation vector here very easily which will be let us say p r, p s, p t and p h which is connected to the global responses which is p r bar, p s bar, p t bar and p h bar using a transformation matrix. So, let us quickly see how do we transform this. You know if we resolve p r bar, okay, if we resolve p r bar along y m obviously, this angle is theta this is also theta. Okay. So, I can say this is going to be p r will be p r bar cos theta okay. and if we resolve this p s down it will be minus sin theta. Okay. So, I can write a transformation like this. Similarly, in the other end I can say this is going to be c x and minus c y. Similarly, I can always find p t that is along x axis the, rest, the transformation which can be c y 0 c x 0 which will have contribution from r and s. Similarly, the other end will have contribution from t and h. So, c y 0 c x. So, now I can write this as p vector is equation number 1. Now, I can write a new equation saying p vector in local for i th member will be transformation matrix for the truss of the i th member multiplied by p bar of the i th member equation number 2. Okay. Therefore, all relationships like the displacement 
of the truss member of the ith member will be again connected to the transformation matrix of the ith member with the top the responses of the ith member in the reference access system. I call this equation number 3. Further, if you want to find the responses of the truss member in reference access system delta bar, this can be simply given by T transpose of the truss member with that of the local axis responses which is 4, where delta transpose in the local axis will be simply delta r, delta s, delta t and delta h, whereas delta bar in the global reference axis system will be simply delta bar, delta s, delta t and delta h respectively. Now, since we already derived the stiffness coefficients for the member of a beam element. Now, we can do the same thing by just transforming it for the axial response member. I can say now the stiffness matrix of the truss member of an ith element can be simply given by a 4 by 4 matrix which will have R, S, T and H as rows and columns. And you know this will be 0 and this will be A e by L minus A e by L minus A e by L and A e by L. This is standard stiffness matrix for a truss member without n rotations. Okay. If we really wanted to find the global stiffness matrix of this with reference to the reference X system of the ith member can simply say use the transformation matrix transpose, use the local matrix of this and then again multiply this with the transformation matrix of the ith member to get this equation 5, I can call this equation 6. Now, I can also write the responses of the truss member in reference axis system will be simply k bar of the truss member multiplied by delta bar of the truss member plus if there are any n reactions of the truss member, okay, where P bar of the truss member vector is simply P bar R, P bar S, P bar T and P bar H and F P bar of the truss member will be n reactions in R degree of freedom, in S degree of freedom, in T degree of freedom and H degree of freedom respectively of the ith member. Okay. So, it is very simple the planar truss problem looks much simpler than the beam element problem. Let us take an example and apply this to a problem and solve the problem using stiffness method. We will also give you the computer code, we will use the computer code rather to solve this problem. So, we are now going to solve the example 1 of a planar truss system okay, using stiffness method. So, let us draw this problem here. Okay. The supports are this way indicated, the loads are indicated here, it has got a 40 kilo Newton load applied at this node and a 20 kilo Newton load applied at this node. Let us name the nodes 
as A, B, C and D. Let us name the members as 1, okay, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, there are 5 members in this truss system. Let us make a small table which are required. Now, let us say the area of cross section of these members. Let us say E is constant. What will may be the value for the material? This member has got A as the value. Okay. This member has 0.8 A as the value and this member has A as the value and these two members has 1.2 A as the value. Okay. Where A is actually 5000 mm square. So, this becomes 4000 for the member B C, 5000 for both the members A B and C D. For the members 4 and 5 that is member B D and A C is about 1.2 times of 5 which is 6000. Okay. So, A is known, E is known. Now, let us mark the length, the dimensions this is about 4 meters this is also 4 meters. Okay. Now, let us mark the unrestrained and restrained degrees of freedom. Let us draw the figure slightly in a bigger size. Okay. Let us see how many unrestrained degrees of freedom this truss has, the displacement degrees. Okay. You know joint B has 2, joint C has to okay. these are unrestrained. The restrained degrees of freedom joint A has 2 and joint D has 2. These are nothing but displacements along x and along y, is it not? Let us mark them. So, say this is my truss system. Okay, let us mark the understand degrees. This is going to be delta 1 and delta 2 and to be delta 3 and delta 4. Then the restrained degrees delta 5, delta 6, 7 and delta 8. Okay. The reference system is this. This is my global x and global y. Now, I want to mark the local x and y of every member. Okay, let us do that in blue color. So, this member will have x m and y m here. This member will have x m, x m and y m here. The fourth member will have x m and y m here and the fifth member will have x m and y m here. So, let us make a small table. The table is very interesting and easy. Let us say the member, let us say the ends, where is my j th end, where is my k th end for the member, what is the length of the member in meters, what is the angle theta of the member, therefore, what is my c x and c y and what are my global labels? Okay, let us do that. So, for the member A B, the joint 
A and B are at J and K respectively. This is 4 meters, theta is plus 90. You have to measure x m angle with the reference axis. So, this value you know this is 90 degree ok, 90 degree. Therefore, cos and sin can be worked out. I will fix the global label slightly later. Now, let us do this B C. This is for B and C ok, 4 meters again, but this angle is 0. Therefore, this is 1 and this is 0. Similarly, for the member C D, this is D and C, you know the origin is here. This is again 4 meters, again plus 90. So, 0 and 1. For the member B D, origin is at B, because this is A, this is B, this joint is C, this joint is D. So, B D is it not. The length is root of root 2 into 4 meters that is 5.646. Now, the angle you have to measure this angle with reference to this x x axis which is going to be minus 45 because anti clockwise is positive is it not. So, this is going to be 0 0.707 this is minus 0 0.707 for the member A C it is at A and C. Okay. The length is 5.646 meters. If you look at this angle, this angle is anti clockwise 45, so plus 45, so it is going to be 0 0.707 and as 0 0.707. Okay. Let us look at the global labels. Please compare a standard truss element, a standard truss element which will have x m and y m. The degrees of freedom are r, s, t and h is it not. So, first two labels are along y, the second two labels are along x correct. So, now let us look at the member a b. So, first two labels are along y global y. So, 6 and 2 are the labels 6 and 2 the next two labels are along x what so is 5 and 1. Okay. Similarly, for the member B C you can write now 2 4 1 3 that is along y and then along x. Similarly, for the member C D the D is here therefore, 8 4 7 3 8 4 7 3. The first two refers degrees of freedom starting from the jth node. Okay. The second two refers degrees of freedom again starting from jth node. Correct. Let us for the member B D the origin is here. Therefore, along y 2 and 8 be very careful we are looking for global labels. So, 2 and 8. So, 2 and 8 and then along x 1 and 7. Correct. So, for A C origin is here along global y 6 and 4. So, 6 and 4 then along global x 5 and 3. So, 5 and 3. I do not think there is any doubt here still you can understand very clearly there will be no difficulty in this correct. Once we mark this based upon the values of C x and C y once I know the transformation matrix. Okay. I can easily find out transformation matrix for each member because I know C x and C y. I can now find each member transformation matrix very easily. Okay. One can also find K A B using this relationship. We know K local is going to be from equation 5. So, use equation 5 A, E and L are known therefore, I can easily find K A B which will be e into 10 power minus 3 for the local labels r s t and h ok will be 0 0 0 0 4 zeros here 2 zeros here this also r s t 
T and H 1.25 minus 1.25 minus 1.25 and 1.25 by K A B. Let us do this for K B C which will be E into 10 power minus 3 again. Similarly, I can do this for local K C D which will be E 10 power minus 3 and so on is it not. I can do it for K B D which is E 10 power minus 3. I can do it for K A C which is E 10 power minus 3 So, now friends we have the stiffness matrices for all the 5 members you can see here for the member A B B C C D D B D and A C. We have all the 5 members. We also have the transformation matrix for all the members for A B for all the 5 members we have the transformation matrix because we have the relationship of C X and C Y. Okay. Now, I can always find K global of the trust member of any member which is given by this relationship T transpose k local okay, and t of the member. So, I use this expression and find k global of all the members. So, now I get k global of the trust member for all the 5 members because I have the transformation matrix of all the 5 members. I have local stiffness matrix of all the 5 members I can use this relationship and compute this. Now, what we have with us is the k global matrix of all the 5 members. Okay, which I am now writing here. So, I should say k bar a b which is e into 10 power minus 3 by using this relationship k bar a b will be t transpose of a b multiplied by k a b then t of k a b is it not? We can easily get this. K A B will be given by 0 0.001 3 minus 0 0.0013 0 0 that is K A B. Let us find K B C. Now, let us mark the degrees of freedom label here. We already know K A B has the degree of freedom 6 2 5 1. So, let us mark the labels here because we need this labels 6 2 5 1 6 2 5 1. We need this labels to assemble the stiffness matrix later. Okay. Now, K B C which will be E 10 power minus 3. Okay, now, the labels are in this case 2, 4, 1, 3. Okay, we can also find K C D which will be E K A B has no multiplier. 
simply E, this also has no multiplier, simply it is E okay, into this E times of 0 0.0013. 0, 0, 1, 3, 0, 0. Now, the labels for KCD are 8, 4, 7, 3. Let us do this for K B D with a diagonal member which will have a multiplier of this value 0 0.5304. Now, the labels are going to be 2, 8, 1 and 7. Similarly, I can do this for K A C So, the labels are going to be 6, 4, 5 and 3. So, we have the k bar for all the members. Okay. We need to assemble this and apply the equation and solve the problem which we will do in the next lecture. So, in this lecture we understand that how to derive the stiffness matrix for plane truss system, how to derive the transformation matrix for each member we then attempted to solve a problem using stiffness method, then we will continue the solution in the next lecture. Thank you very much.